Hey everybody, what's going on? It's Travis here with JT Wealth, and in today's video, we're going to talk about whether or not Bitcoin and crypto could be made illegal here in the US. So let's get into it. All right, welcome back everybody. Thanks for joining us. If you're new to the channel, we appreciate you checking us out. Hopefully you find some value in today's video. If you do, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, give us a big thumbs up, and leave a comment in the comment section down below. So now let's take a look at what today's video topics are. In today's video, we are going to cover whether or not Bitcoin and crypto could be made illegal in the US. Then we're going to watch two video clips from billionaire Ray Dalio giving his Bitcoin pros and whether or not he thinks the US government will outlaw it. This is all from a Yahoo Finance article and video. And then we're going to go into why I wholeheartedly disagree that the US government is going to outlaw Bitcoin and crypto and why. And everybody who's used to seeing Julie on the channel, don't forget you can check her out on the Tip Ranks channel now Monday through Friday where she does her morning market updates as well as some afternoon videos as well. And if you're considering a new brokerage, whether it be for stocks or for Bitcoin or crypto or the like, check out the links in the description down below where you can check out Webull or M1 Finance and my favorite BlockFi for checking out new crypto options. And like I said, the BlockFi link right now is my current personal favorite, and that's because they help you make more money with your crypto or your Bitcoin or whatever kind of um, currency you store with them. So you can right now get up to $250 of free crypto depending on how much you invest in your BlockFi account. And here's a really cool picture from their website showing some of their annual yields on the different stores of value. So right now they're offering 6% APY on Bitcoin, 8.6% on GUSD, which is their Gemini US dollar, which is just pegged at the US dollar. So if you put in $100, you're getting 8.6% on $100. Then their deposit for ETH is earning 5.25% and the USDC is 8.6%, just like the Gemini US dollar. So basically if you're gonna hold Bitcoin guys, if you're gonna hold crypto or any money at all, you might as well be doing it with an account that's going to earn you more money than even a high yield savings account would be. And all that finally being said, let's get into today's video. Is the government going to ban Bitcoin? Well, here's a perfect image of what the government banning Bitcoin could look like. As you can tell, they can put up a block, a fence, whatever you might call it, but there are a hundred ways around that, right? So I don't foresee the government having an effective ban on Bitcoin, but let's get into it. So now I'm gonna play for you a video from Yahoo Finance where they interviewed billionaire Ray Dalio and he's going to go over the pros first of Bitcoin and then later on we're gonna show a video where he talks about the likelihood of it becoming illegal. So let's look at the pros first. Part question, is it dangerous? And what do you think the likelihood of the government outlawing it is and is that even feasible? Bitcoin has proven itself over uh, the last 10 years. Um, it proved um, it hasn't been hacked. Uh, it's by and large, therefore, worked on an operational basis. Um, it has built a significant following. It is an alternative, um, in a sense, uh, storeholder wealth. It's like a digital cash. Um, and those are the pluses. All right, so those are some pretty solid pros, right? It's never been hacked since it's been created, which makes it basically effectively operational, right? There's no problems with how it runs. He mentioned the significant following that Bitcoin has, which is obviously true, right? And that it has worked as an effective store of value or digital cash. So with all of its effectiveness and pros highlighted, why does he still think it could be outlawed here in the US? Let's check out clip number two. The history was, um, you know, banks always used to exist, and then um, with the Bank of England, um, it, they decided that they it was in their interest to have a monopoly on banking at a at a country. And so, what we did is we uh, every country treasures its monopoly on controlling the supply and demand. They don't want other monies to be operating or competing because things can get out of control. So I think that uh, it would be very likely that um, you will have um, it under a certain set of circumstances uh, outlawed the way gold was outlawed. And you're watching that question arise in India today. India today um, is making the move to outlaw it, outlaw possession of it. 
Um, okay, so we have to see what that means. Now Yikes. All right, so those are all true points, right? And everybody who knows the government knows they have to have their hands in everything. And the government enjoys their monopoly on monies or the fiat. So no government is going to want another currency to come around that can effectively replace the dollar, right? So they enjoy their monopoly and they see cryptocurrencies as a whole as a potential... Um, challenge to that fiat right so they're not going to enjoy that challenge and they may seek to le uh, make it illegal like they did in india and one of the things that isn't covered in this video but is well you know widespread is that crypto as a whole and bitcoin is always referenced when talking about illegal activities so everybody wants to talk about how you know it's it's in the dark web and people are utilizing it to fund crimes and money laundering and stuff like that but we're completely assuming that cash isn't so assuming that bitcoin and crypto is going to be used for crime um i don't know about you guys but i've never seen a drug deal done with crypto or you know stuff like that right so it doesn't matter what the store of value is what the finance option is criminals are going to utilize whatever they can to break the law in if, that, if that's their goal right so it doesn't matter what the store of value is if it's bitcoin today or if it's god knows what in a hundred years they're always going to find a way to do that so it's kind of a moot point okay so now let's get into why i wholeheartedly disagree and i do not think the u.s government is going to criminalize bitcoin or crypto and here in this Forbes Advisor article, welcome Gary Gensler, nominated to lead the SEC. And what does that mean for you? Well, Mr. Gary Gensler is now the chair of the Securities and Exchange Commission, and he's waiting to assume office. But prior to that, he was the chair of the Commodity Futures Trading Commission from 2009 to 2014. And although his position there is important, it's an academic posting that he held that I find far more intriguing. Gensler was an MIT professor for the practice of global economics and management, as well as the senior advisor to the MIT Media Lab's Digital Currency Initiative. He spent his time there focusing on the intersection of finance and technology and researching blockchain and crypto technologies. Combining his research interests in finance and technology, as well as his public policy background, I foresee him coming into the SEC with some important decisions to make, one of which will include blockchain and crypto, but I don't foresee him going full illegalize, right? They're not going to criminalize it. I think he's going to go more along the regulation route. So if you don't know what the SEC is or some of the things that they're facing, let's check this out. The big issues facing the SEC today. The SEC is the primary federal regulatory agency tasked with protecting investors, policing the securities market, and facilitating capital formation. Basically, that boils down to making sure shareholders aren't ripped off, markets work without drama, and companies are able to raise cash from investors. Here are a few of the higher profile issues that Gensler, if his candidacy is approved, would focus on in the SEC over the coming years. So the four areas Gensler and the SEC are going to have to focus on in coming years are the meme stock experience, like what just happened with GameStop, boardroom diversity, environmental, social, and governance issues, or ESG, and finally, Bitcoin mania. So back when Gensler led the CFTC, cryptocurrency was a techie sideshow that most of mainstream finance kept at an arm's length. Today, a single Bitcoin is worth more than $55,000, and some of the biggest companies in the world, including Tesla and Fidelity, have gotten in on the action. After he left an Obama White House, Gensler taught at MIT's Sloan School of Management, focusing on issues like cryptocurrencies and government policy. While at MIT, Gensler warned that virtual currency projects like Facebook's DM, formerly known as Libra, would face an eventual reckoning with regulators. So even there, he was mentioning a reckoning with regulators, not necessarily a criminalization issue. Now, who knows what he really meant by that or what his intent was, but it looks that he was emphasizing the importance of regulating these, these new technologies. Markets and technology are always changing, Gensler said in his opening remarks. Our rules have to change along with them. In my current role as a professor at MIT, I research and teach on the intersection of technology and finance. I believe financial technology can be a powerful force for good, but only if we continue to harness the core values of the SEC in service of investors, issuers, and the public. 
Back in 2019, Gensler wrote an article for Coindesk examining the potential for cryptocurrencies to be change agents that could shake up the world of finance. As in other forums, he was even-handed in examining the costs and benefits of virtual currencies like Bitcoin. Though literally thousands of projects have yet to land on broadly adopted use cases, I remain intrigued by Satoshi's innovation's potential to spur change, either directly or indirectly as a catalyst, he wrote. What's his SEC leadership could mean for the future of crypto remains to be seen, but it's clear that Gensler is no Luddite. If you don't know, and I didn't, I had to look it up, Luddite just means somebody who is against new technologies. So taken holistically, I think the important things to note here is that yes, the government may be afraid of a monopoly uh, competing against the US dollar, but they've already admitted that they're working towards digital currencies of their own, although they will be pegged at the dollar. But I think if you look at how Gensler is going to approach this from a regulatory standpoint, it works in favor of things that we're currently seeing. Like if you just did your taxes or if you're about to, you do have to actually mark off a box that lets them know if you own or hold any cryptocurrencies. And that's because they want to tax you. <laughs> so if you are holding monies and you are making money off of those investments like you would off of any other security, they want their share of that. So this is an, inst an instance of them regulating cryptocurrencies and regulating Bitcoin. Also, when you think of some of the widespread uh, acceptance of Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies in the last couple of years, and the millions and millions of dollars that have been spread out through Bitcoin purchases by really large investors, you always have to remember that those really large investors have uh, a strong impact in politics, right? Because they can always reach out and, and make a large donation to a fund and all of a sudden their cause is important to a politician. So I don't, I don't foresee uh, us going the way of India. I don't foresee us having problems with Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies becoming illegal. I do foresee regulation and I think that that regulation will work out uh, to everybody's benefit just because it will basically be proof of widespread acceptance of the cryptocurrency and of Bitcoin. All right, so that's it, guys. We covered Ray Dalio's opinions, his pros of Bitcoins and crypto, as well as his thoughts on whether or not it becomes illegal, and then my reasons for why I don't think that's going to happen anytime in the near future. Um, let me know what you think. Let me know in the comment section down below. Do you hold Bitcoin? Do you hold other cryptos? What do you think is going to happen to it in the future? Hopefully, it never becomes illegal, right? I want it to keep growing um, and reach some of those levels that we've talked about in other videos. But hopefully, you guys found some value in today's video. If you did, don't forget to give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and hopefully, we'll see you soon. All right, guys, bottoms up.